joining us tonight. I am being assisted by Sabrina and Sabrina's behind the camera, but uh, they may be sending you little chats throughout the evening, so keep your eye out for that. And um, we can communicate through the chat, and Sabrina will let me know, or otherwise you can unmute yourself and ask me any questions. And you can always put on your camera if you want to do the whole social thing. That's fun, too. So, um, but I'm going to go through this painting with you together. Let me uh, let you know how I have this all set up to start. So, with me tonight, I have, first of all, I have the very important line. So, hopefully you have a refreshment at your uh, disposal tonight. We have leftover, uh, isn't it monkey serum? Because it was my birthday. So, uh, make sure you get a drink to enjoy and maybe a snack because uh, this is virtual sipping and painting Hampton. So, uh, we got that going. And then we have paint. And I just have a paper plate on which I have the basic colors tonight. Red, yellow, blue, green, black, and white. So very basic colors. And just a little squirt each. And these are acrylic paints on paper plate. I also have a big, big, you see that? Big brush. Uh, there we go. Medium brush. And a small round brush. Let's see, you have this here. Take a station there, and then I have a, this is an old t-shirt to blot my brushes on as I paint. You can also use uh, old napkins or, well, <laughs> not old ones. <laughs> I just use napkins or paper towels. So I'm going to blot your brushes up. And then I have two jars. These are just mason jars filled with water. I usually keep two around just so I don't have to run back and forth to the sink to refill the uh, water, the brush cleaning jar. Uh, let's see. And then I also have an apron. Don't forget to protect your clothes because acrylic paint is uh, permanent once it's dry. So, let's see. Got everything all set. Let's sip some wine in the case for just a second. Cheers. Had fun little birthday celebration this week. That was cool. Uh, and I will want to hear about if you guys had any celebrations. You can let me know that a little bit later. Think about all the celebrations you got going on. Let us see. So tonight we're going to be painting this painting full bloom. I've got a little sample here, but uh, uh, Nancy's screen is turned to the sample. If you want to look at that closer, you can bring that up to a full screen for a little square there. And um, we're going to be going to this, through this step by step together. So first step, I'm going to take my big brush and wet it in the water. So let's see, bring it a little closer. You don't have to reach away over there. I'm sweating that big brush in water. And I'm going to start with water and yellow paint. And just going to paint that whole background yellow. Now, keep in mind, the acrylic is layered. So you can paint the whole background yellow. And I always water down the paint. Because when you thin down acrylic, it actually dries faster. It's kind of plastic. And so um, if you use the paint as it came out of the container, it takes a little longer to dry. So I keep dipping the brush in the paint and in the water to thin it down. And then it kind of goes on in a thin, drippy layer, and then we'll let that dry. So just continuing to get that whole background a nice sunny yellow. Oh, and by the way, as with all the paintings we do at City and Painting Hampton, you're welcome to uh, change this up any way you like. So if you want a different color background, you can, you can uh, realize your own vision. I do recommend, if you're following the basic painting, just keep the background something lighter than the foreground colors. But uh, you can always kind of change that up, too. Just make sure that your colors contrast with each other so that your flowers will show up against your background. So right now, I have this bright, sunny yellow. This is just really just a real sunshiny yellow. I had two different yellows in my color set. One was more of a green yellow. I picked the more orangey one. I wanted it to be really bright and shiny. I've been really enjoying the spring flowers here in Denver this year. We got lucky and we didn't get any of those um, beetles. So we have a lot of nice roses out front. So hopefully you've been enjoying that as well. Got a lot of sunshiny flowers here. And I am using my big brush and water and yellow paint, and I'm really going in every direction with these brushes. I'm not even trying to be careful at all. I'm just covering the background of my canvas here. 
with yellow paint. And I do have a 16 by 20 pre-stretch canvas. I don't know if any of you got to the studio to pick up a kit or if you've got your own supplies, but that's what I'm using. You can also use uh, canvas covered, covered board or plywood or any kind of surface that you can paint acrylic paint on. You can get creative with it. Just use what you have on hand. So right now I have that whole canvas covered with water and yellow paint. And I also, since I am using the stretch canvas, and I'm just going back and forth with these brush strokes, since I'm using a stretch canvas, I'm going to go all the way around the edges where the canvas wraps around the stretcher bars. Yes, the canvas wraps around the wood there, but I'm going to go on the edges and paint those up as well because that'll give the canvas a nice finished look. And I won't need a frame for it when I hang it up tonight and it'll look all nice and finished as a result of painting the edges. So you want to make sure you pick it up off the easel and get all four edges as you're painting this as well. And we'll let that dry after we paint it. And that's where having a snack comes in handy. You can have your snack while your paint's drying and uh, enjoy yourself, relax. Always relaxing to spend an evening painting, so I'm glad you got to join us tonight. And uh, you can always watch these videos on our YouTube channel later as well if you decide that you want to take a look at it again or share it with a friend. We're going to post these on our YouTube channel, and you should check that out because we've got a bunch of things up there now, a bunch of classes and a bunch of different paintings, and you can paint something different with us every night. Tomorrow we're going to be doing the Colorado flag, which is always popular. So we should be able to see that as well. And I believe tomorrow's class is still a free Zoom class, so you can even join in with us for free. So we can be teaching that one. So I've got that whole canvas filled with yellow. And now I'm going to check out that Riesling. And by the way, I wear um, gloves because I don't like to get messy. It's not because the paint is toxic. It's uh, it always washes off with hot soapy water, but I just don't like to get all pink. And you can see I've picked up a lot of canvases, and even my gloves got to be messy. So, uh, you know, if you have them around, they're nice. I use kind of the ones that you get in those sets of hair coloring, just those little vinyl gloves, but uh, just because I don't like to get painty. And make sure you get your, your uh, apron as well so you don't get your clothing messed up. Fun fact. Uh, if you do get acrylic on painting, sometimes uh, rubbing alcohol can be used to get that out. But it is still pretty difficult to get out. You want to make sure you can get painting if you can avoid it. I have a uh, special set of painting clothes when I paint in my own studio. They're a uh, sweat suit from like back in 1990. And it's got it's covered with paint at this point. But it's kind of an art piece in itself as a result. So. Cheers to our bright, sunny background. I'm going to let that dry for a couple minutes, and uh, then we'll get to apply our, our flowers. So um, while I'm letting that dry, let me know, let you know a couple things about the studio. I don't know if you got over there to pick up your kit, but if you haven't been over to Sydney and Painting Hampton, uh, it's been open during the day to sell art kits, not only uh, for the upcoming paintings that we've been sharing on our Zoom classes, but also kits for children to paint uh, paintings at home. And we are going to post videos of a whole series of children's paintings coming up here real soon. I think uh, there are a couple up there already, and we're going to be adding to that collection. We have a whole slew of really adorable paintings that uh, youngsters as young as age six can paint with us and fun kid subjects like ice cream and little animals and fun stuff. So we're going to start on that with them. And we also have uh, masks, which are a very popular thing these days. Got like these little sipping and painting logo masks. So I love that. You can, you can uh, advertise for sipping and painting hands, which we love. And then uh, we also have these Monet-inspired kind of little tie-dye masks. That's in the package that it 
protein in there, but they're cute little kind of water, water inspired, like Monet, you know, inspired mask. Kind of a peaceful, peaceful thing. And then uh, we got the logo one. So check those out in the studio if you're over near the Hitting Hampton. Got that going. Now, I always say there's two ways to tell if your painting is dry. One is pick it up and rub it on your neighbor, right? So if you're if you're painting with somebody, you can rub it on them. If they yell at you, it's still wet. But otherwise, you can kind of look at it at an angle. I don't know if you can kind of see it shining in my in my lights up there. But mine's a little shiny, so it's still a little bit wet. I'm gonna let that dry for another minute. We do these big white flowers, and we want to make sure the yellow is dry so that they come out nice and bright white. So we'll let that dry here. Now, uh, hopefully you've got your material set, and I'm not sure if you're caught up with me yet. You can always chat us and let us know, or um, if you have any questions, you can let us know that too, or you can unmute yourself. I normally would have music, but uh, because of uh, copyright issues, I'm, I'm not having music at home because this goes up on YouTube, but you can have music as long as you're muted. Uh, enjoy yourself in your painting space. Cheers to that. Let's see, not only did we have my birthday, but again, there was also Father's Day to celebrate. And I know June is big for anniversaries. So let us know if you're celebrating something too. I definitely want to know about your celebration. Always fun. And we'll have you show off your paintings as we progress through the evening too. This painting is called Full Bloom. And I love paintings like this because it's real loose and free and you don't have to be real careful with it. It's just fun, uh, bright colored, cheerful painting. You can put it up on the wall or give it as a gift and it'll brighten somebody's day. So I love paintings like this. This one I think goes back to when we first, uh, when Nancy first bought the studio. So this is going back five years and um, the painter that previously on the studio did a lot of very loose uh, free paintings, really nice, uh, open, happy style. Um, we've had a lot of different artists over the years, and of late, a lot of us have been uh, very careful, precise painters, so they, the paintings got a little bit tighter. This one is, is very free and fun, so I like that. So now, let's see, I'm going to check out and see if that's dry. Still got a little bit of sheen to it, so it's still a little bit wet, but I'm going to want to continue with these flowers. And let's see, we have a little base at the bottom. We can start with that while we're waiting for most of the peach to dry. How about that? So let us switch. You can, let's switch to the small brush. If you use a smaller brush, you'll find that it gives you more hand control. Oops, I'm a little bit out of, uh, I, I made the uh, focus a little out of focus. My assistant is working on that. There we go. Sometimes <laughs> we have to, play around with a little zoom, but I have, let's see that little skinny brush, and if I wet that off in the water to start, I can pick up some, I'm going to pick up a little bit of white paint with that little skinny brush on the plate there, and I'm going to mix it with just a little bit of blue, because if I do completely wet, I won't be able to see it on this bright yellow background, but I'm going to uh, give myself a little base like we have in the sample so that I have a place to plant my lovely little poppies there. I think they're poppies. Looks like the poppies in my yard. But uh, I'm gonna make this, it doesn't have to be exactly at the center of your canvas. You can make it slightly off center. I think I'm gonna make my base slightly on the left hand side of the canvas. Because I think a little bit of off center gives a little movement to the composition. It makes it a little interesting. So Going slightly further towards the left hand side of the canvas, I'm going to start at the very bottom with a little skinny brush and I'm going to curve kind of like the letter D. Kind of an inside curve there. And we, I know this is real light. I'm looking at the screen. Let's see, I'll, I'll hold that up so you can see it. It's sex. It's just a gentle curve. Oops, let's see. There we go. You can see kind of curved in towards the middle of the canvas. 
and it's going up about a little bit wider than my hand, maybe maybe about the height of my fingers up off the bottom edge of the canvas. And I am using a 16 by 20 canvas here. So if that gives you an idea about sizing, you might want to adjust it if you have a surface of a different size. But once I get that first curve curving up, I'm going to go straight across with the top of that base about hmm, three or four inches or a little wider than my fingers, and then gently curve in in the other direction. And I will hold this up so you can see it here in just a second in case it's a little bit hard to see on screen. But I mixed a little bit of white with the blue paint for my vase because I want to give an impression of a glass vase. And it doesn't have to be mixed really carefully. Just kind of kind of a little bit of white, a little bit of blue. And uh, I'm always a little bit messy and, and this painting you can you can afford to be because it uh, is a nice loose painting so it's okay if all your lines are a little bit uh, wiggly and off kilter that kind of makes it interesting right so a little bit of white a little bit of blue i'm going to go back with some white over those lines just so i have a combination of both and i also like to continue these illusions right around the edge just like i painted around the edge i think it's a fun thing when you hang it up and you can see that uh, image go right over the edge. It's kind of cute. It continues that gallery wrap. And uh, that way, when you hang it going up the steps, it all looks nice and finished. So that's how that looks on the very edge there. It's continuing that base right around there. We have a bunch of, I, I can see them from where I'm sitting, a bunch of sitting and painting, painting hanging up our stairwell. And you can see the bottom edges when you walk up the steps. Nice to have that finished look about it. So it started with the outline of our vase here, and you can always look at the sample that's on the other Zoom screen. And you can also add a little bit of a hint of blue white in the inside, kind of paralleling those lines or uh, echoing the edge lines going up to give a hint of. Uh, Reflection coming off the glass the vase. That's an option. Oops. Add a little bit too much blue. You can always rebalance it out a little white. I'm not cleaning the brush here, just dipping the brush in a little bit of white, a little bit of blue, just making some reflecty uh, splashes of light on my vase. Hold that up so you can see it. So you can see it's kind of messy, uh, but kind of fun. Got our little base where we're going to plant our flowers up, and I already got paint on the canvas, but that's okay. We're going to come back later and paint some green foliage going off there, so I'm not going to worry. But that's what happens. That's why I get all painty on my little gloves. So, cheers to that. And I don't know if we got the kiddos joining us tonight. I'm not sure I saw we had some families on there, so hopefully, you got a little bit of um, soda pop or something else going on. Little snacks. I had uh, uh, oranges for one of these classes, but I got clean on them to keep the keep the snacks away from the paint. I always want to keep those separate. Uh, let's see. So we have those masks for sound studio, and we have art kits for adults and for kids, and um, we got our videos posting to YouTube all the time. So make sure you check out our Sipping and Painting Hampton channel and like our videos, subscribe and like our videos. So that's the little uh, YouTube system helps us. Uh, promote them and people the world over will be able to see the painting videos the cool stuff and hey you can always pretend you you're visiting us right in the painting Hampton and uh and if you visited us there you'd probably get a drink and then maybe you'd even tip in the virtual tip jar and that's why we have Venmo so uh, you can always hit me up at Ernstine Art that's my little Venmo Thing. I am working for tips tonight, so uh, that is always appreciated. And we'll pretend we actually, uh, we'll pretend we sit together in the studio. So cheers to that. And let's see, now we have our vase and we can start painting our flowers. Now, by this time, my background has had a good chance to dry. It's uh, got a kind of chalky uh, look at, if you look at it at an angle. Oh, 
there's my focus again. Thank you to my assistant, Sabrina, who fixed my focus. But it's got a kind of chalky look to it, and that's how you know it's dry. If you look at it at an angle and it uh, is not shiny. So now I can start in with my flowers. And with these flowers, I'm going to use, I think, my medium-sized brush for this. It's up to you which brush you choose, whatever uh, makes you most comfortable. Smaller brushes give you a little more hand control. But I'm going to start with that medium-sized brush and wet it in the water. And I always kind of tap it on my paper towels or, in this case, old uh, T-shirts. And I'm going to dip that in the white paint to start and make some uh, big flowers. Now, these, this is a 16 by 20 canvas, and there are four big flowers. Uh, in this sample, you can't tell because the sample is smaller than my finished painting, but they're actually, uh, each flower is going to be bigger than the size of my tip. So big, nice, giant flowers. The first one is about a hand width from the top on the left side that I'm going to paint. I'm going to start on the far side of the canvas, and I'm going to take this medium-sized brush loaded up with white paint and scrub around and go, whoop, it was nice and uh, wet. It drips immediately. You can always really wipe that up with your paper towel real quick or your hands like I did. But I'm going to scrub that around in circles with my white paint and just make a big old blobby blob that's bigger than my fist for this flower. These are, I think, uh, poppies, right? Or, um, no, not poppies. What are those? What are those big white flowers? Uh, maybe they are poppies. No. What am I thinking of? What are the ones out in the yard? I can't think. Roses? No. We do have roses. Maybe they are roses. But that was what I was thinking of. But let me show you that up close so you can see. It kind of looks like a big cloud. Just, just a big, you can see that's bigger than my fist on this 16 by 20 canvas, and it's about three fingers from the top and maybe a finger off the left-hand side of the canvas to start. So towards the top and just really rough. It'll come to me what those uh, flowers are probably after I'm done teaching this class. <laughs> but uh, just scrubbing the brush around in kind of spiral or round brush strokes and make it a big puffy flower there, just a big rough shape kind of like a cloud, so starting with that one. And then, and we do want to vary the size of these flowers to keep the composition interesting, because some of the flowers will be smaller than others. So then, I'm going to continue on with an even bigger flower, and that one's going to be this big guy that comes off the top, kind of right-hand side of the canvas. And so this comes right off the top edge, and scrubbing my brush around, big round brush strokes, medium sized brush loaded up with white paint and just real rough edges on that flower and all white to start. So it goes right off the edge and you can even go around that canvas where it wraps the stretcher bar on the top. And I will hold that up so you can see that up close because I know it's real light of course, on my yellow background to start, just white paint. The nice thing about acrylic is it layers, so you can always adjust the painting as you paint it by painting over the layers underneath. This one is about six fingers from the right-hand side of the canvas coming straight off the top, so it's touching the top edge of the canvas, and it's even bigger than what I said, so nice giant flower, bigger than the first flower. Just want to make I want to make this guy really, really big and make the edges uneven. You can kind of vary the texture. Let me hold that up so you can see. Just a real uh, varied texture pattern, making that kind of scalloped, but making the scallops different sizes. So I got that second flower there. And I, by the way, I dropped my brush in the water. Whenever I'm not using the brushes, I keep them sitting in the water jar, and that's because acrylic paint, being a plastic, uh, when it dries out, it will dry right on those brushes, and then you won't be able to get them clean. And we certainly want to be able to clean them at the end of the evening. Now, usually, when I'm being painting Hanson, I love to clean up for you, but unfortunately, I am not able to do that tonight, and you will have to do your own cleanup. So you'll want to make sure that you keep your brushes wet so your cleanup is easy for you. And let me talk a little bit about how you do that, so you know how to keep your materials 100%. You can paint with us again tomorrow. 
And that is, you take your brushes uh, out of the water jar when you're done for the evening, and you take a little bit of liquid soap and put it in your hand, and then you scrub the brushes around in the liquid soap in your palm and get them nice and soapy, and then run them under the water until the water runs clear. And then I always flatten out the brushes if they're flat like that, or round them if they're round, and just leave them sitting horizontal on the countertop to dry. And then they'll be perfect for when you need to paint the next time. You always want to keep your materials nice. And you could have these brushes literally for a lifetime. I have some of my grandfather's brushes because he always treated them so well. So do make sure you remember to clean your brushes at the end of the evening so that you can come back and paint with us again. So I uh, dropped that in the water jar, but now I want to get that out of the water jar. And every time I get it out of the water jar, I make sure I squat it on the paper towel and get the excess water out of it. And the reason why we always have a t-shirt or a paper towel handy when we're doing acrylic or watercolors uh, is because we want to control the amount of paint and water on the brush at all times. So there's always that balance that we're creating with paint and water. So now I'm going to take my medium-sized brush, dip it in the water again, and I want to make one flower that's right above my base here. So making this one, this one is going to be closer to the size of the first one there that I painted. And again, making these spiral-shaped brush strokes. But uh, I would say these flowers are kind of maybe elongated, um, oval-shaped kind of, I mean, they're, they're kind of like cloud-shaped, but uh, they're not perfectly round or anything, they're more elongated. So I'm making this one more or less right over the base, the top of the base there, and making it really uh, interesting edges too. Keep that, keep those edges interesting. And I want to uh, make a fourth flower that is going to be, let's see, I want to make sure I'm faithful to my sample. And you can always uh, vary your painting at home, but I always try to uh, duplicate the samples as they appear. But I'm going to make the fourth flower kind of tilted up at an angle and starting just below the rim of my base and tilting up towards the right here. So making it a couple fingers width, about two fingers width from the base and tilting up towards the right hand edge of the canvas. And I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger than the one I just painted above the lip of the base. So white paint, medium-sized brush, spinning around those brush strokes and tipping up towards the right. Got all those things going together. Now I have four big puppy flowers. And it's important as you paint to step back from the painting. I am uh, on this little zoom screen, so I uh, don't want to run away from you, but it's important that we step back every once in a while and take a look at the work because an artist always wants to take in the painting as a viewer sees it, which is from a distance. You're sitting about a foot and a half away from the work, and so you uh, kind of see all the details, but you want to be able to appreciate it as the viewer does, sitting many feet back in your couch. And sipping the glass of wine and taking the whole thing in. So you want to make sure you're doing that as well because that will give you a sense of how the whole composition is shaping up. And for me here, I'm taking a look to make sure I'm faithful to my sample. And uh, I also want to make sure that I've got all the details placed the way I like them. I think I want to make my flowers maybe even slightly bigger, a couple of them. So we'll add a little bit of paint to the canvas. And you can show me your paintings as well. If you want to uh, show me them, I can. I have my uh, camera for Zoom, but I can also see on the screen. I've got one next to it, so I can see what you're up to as well. If you'd like to share your paintings at any time, that's always fun. At the end of the evening, we can all hold up our paintings and see the final result too. I'm going to make my flowers just a little bit bigger here. I want to make sure they really have impact on the final painting. So I want to make them real big and then just add a little paint to each flower so that it's got a lot of presence in this sunny flower painting. I'm 
little leafy brush strokes. And leave some just floating off by themselves. It's kind of an illustrator's trick to when you paint leaves, to leave some of them floating in the air kind of nearby the whole uh, kind of because uh, so they stalk the leaves. There must be a better way to put that. Uh, but but uh, floating separate from the whole body of leaves so that they uh, give a nice loose open look. And and that's very pleasant when you're painting nature. I want to make sure I go off the right hand edge with these as well, so that my green extends all the way from the left side of the canvas through the middle, kind of waving up and down between those flowers and off the right hand side of the canvas, and up and around my little, oh, I keep wanting to call these poppies. Maybe they are poppies. Maybe we have white. Are they white poppies? If anybody knows, you can let me know. You can chat me. Let me know if I have that right. I'm uh, I'm a better painter than gardener, I'm afraid. Well, maybe that's good for tonight's purposes. I've got a bunch of plants going this summer. Maybe you've got a garden going. I have these nice white puppy flowers. Actually, I was noticing our roses, they're the ones that are in bloom right now. The white ones have kind of faded, but the, the roses are crazy beautiful. Hopefully you've got lots of flowers to enjoy around your house. And if not, you'll have this painting to enjoy. You'll paint your own flowers if you don't have them growing, right? So adding in these. And be mindful, make sure you step back as you do this so that you're uh, taking in where you want to add more green and where you want to preserve more of the yellow beneath. Um, making my brush strokes connect more in the center between these flowers and letting them taper along the edges more so that the yellow shows through. And I want to fill in more of these holes in the middle, but not all of them. I'm going to go slow so I don't fill in all the holes. And going around all of those flowers with the greenery. And you can either follow the sample or make your flowers how you like them. It is your world. And we've got all that going. So I hear we are going to be able to open up in July and see you in person. So that'll be nice. If you uh, want to make sure, you can check out our calendar online at sippingandpaintinghampton.com and you can see what is coming up on the schedule. I know everything's always uh, different these days, so you'll want to make sure you check that out. You can sign up for class, and uh, if you don't get to join us in person, definitely join us online. Check out our YouTube videos. And I am mixing a little bit of white with the green paint on this medium sized brush and I'm getting variety because some of the paint has more green and some has more white and I'm twisting the brush around in my fingers to get all different shapes and I haven't even had to clean the brush yet. And I'm going right down to that vase with my little leaves and it's okay if you overlap the vase a little bit. I have some greenery coming right over the edge. I'm going to go underneath that flower that's right inside that base and paint those little leaves around down there to the left. Let's see. I'll make sure I step back and take a look. I missed a little greenery off here to the right. I want to fill that in and you can kind of scrub the brush around and get some different texture that way too. I'm twisting that around with my fingers to get different textures and up and off. Let's see, let me hold that up so you can see a little bit closer. See how that is shaping up there. Up. Oh, hmm. <laughs> I want to see if I get that straight. There we go. Got the greenery filled in. Now let that dry for just a second. Let's see, did any of you have celebration? You can always chat. Oh, I see there's, let's see. Yes. Uh, if 
if you want to chat with your celebration, you can do a toast. Otherwise, I'll just sit here and get toasty myself. Let's see. What what good toast do we have? We have we could do a friendship toast. Uh, let's see. Cheers to our friends in hopes that wherever they are, they're toasting to us. Cheers. All right. I hope you're out there toasting and having a good time. Or at least enjoying your snacks. You can, uh, or at least just enjoying eating things. Always a pleasant thing. Oh, and I'm cleaning off that brush without even thinking about it. I leave that sitting in a water jar. I just like holding those brushes. So now I have all that greenery and white flowers. But you can see that these flowers here have a little bit of, uh, oh, they have stems. Let's make sure we add the stems. So those are green too. I may as well do that while I have my green paint handy. I'm going to get my little painty brush for that though. And I took that out of the water jar. So I want to make sure I uh, wipe that off on the little paper towel or rag there. I just spin it around and I make sure I hold it flat there and I make sure I get the water off the uh, handle of the brush and the ferrule as well because otherwise it'll drip into the hair of the brush as you're painting. So that's something that I do, hold that kind of flat. And then I can pick up that little skinny brush and get some white and green together and get those stems. You can see there's stems in my sample here in the jar. So I'm just coming up in the bottom and making a few stems. The one in the middle is straight up and down, but we want to kind of make a uh, couple uh, at an angle. They can they can even overlap. They don't they don't all have to echo the the sides of the vase. They can. Uh, Is that green? Yes, I'm using green paint. My little skinny brush, same uh, color as I did the foliage. Just want to make little stems, and these just go just to beneath the lip of the jar. There, I kind of wanted to preserve the lip of the vase. So I just made some angle lines from the very bottom of the canvas to just underneath the lip of the vase. And they can go at different angles. You can see here, if I hold that up real close, the paint was a little dry. It didn't have a lot of water in it. So I picked up the canvas texture. You can kind of see the flat canvas texture showing through. If you want the paint to flow a little more smoothly for you, you can add a little bit of water to that paint. Generally, I think about uh, having the acrylic paint the consistency of uh, Hershey syrup. You want to have it not so wet that it drips on you, but not so dry that it drags on you. So uh, it's kind of a combination of paint and water so that it flows nice and smoothly for you. And I am taking a little skinny brush, pressing it to the canvas and lifting it up as I go up and making those little stems to just beneath the lip of that base and it actually uh these overlapped my little uh, shiny light marks on the jar and i can go back and add them back in later but i want to make sure that paint dries before i do that so we'll just leave them there for now and if you are going around the edges of that canvas that you continue the illusion of those stems right around the bottom edge and lifted that up off the easel to get the stem to go right around the bottom. So I like to continue that gallery wrap around the edge, and that's how that works as it goes down there. Come on, have it nice and finished when you're done. So, cleaning off that little skinny brush, swishing it around in the water jar, and we'll let that dry for just a bit. Now, these, uh, flowers have little bright red centers and you can use red or orange or uh, some bright color in the center or blue whatever you like <laughs> but we're going to add a little bit of center color there and they're not a uh, round center it's not like daisies these are more elongated flat shape of color in the center so make sure you clean off your brush between colors and uh, use that skinny brush. So let me pause there, let you catch up to me. And then we'll add those red centers. I'm going to 
be. So now I got that little paint brush and some red paint. And any bright color will do. And I'm gonna uh, and don't be concerned whether these are real uh, centered on your flowers. Just want to give a hint of, of color on each flower somewhere in the middle. So on this left uh, flower, we're gonna have kind of a diagonal line, taking a little skinny brush and just kind of dancing that brush, little hat to get a real rough sort of brush stroke in there. Just little tiny caps, touching the brush very lightly to the canvas and kind of twisting around and going in all different directions to get an interesting pattern going there. And that does go from uh, the lower left up to the upper right at a little bit of an angle. It's kind of an elongated shape in the middle of that white puffy flower. So red paint, little skinny brush, and twisty little brush stroke. Yeah, and, and they don't even all have to connect. I just made a little dot off to one side, and I like that too. You, you don't have to make them perfect. Keep nature looking natural. It, it uh, can be real rough edged, and not even all the brushes have to connect. It, it's a couple that are just kind of off on their own. And that gives a nice, interesting variety to your shapes there, same as we did with the uh, leaves on, in between the flowers. And we want to make sure we do that on each flower. So I'm going to make one on the one above the face in sort of a smiley face. Just a little smile going up and down, but it dips in the middle and goes uh, up to the right and kind of tapers off with skinnier brush strokes on the right. That's how that looks. It's almost like a smile, a little happy flower. Just like a flower. That'll make me happy every time I look at it. And let's see, our our flower here on the lower right, I would say has more big spotty red. We don't even have to make it a continuous shape. We can just make little little spots that are kind of spread apart. And that'll be an interesting variety. Gotta change it up. We have some of each. And finally, on our big puppy flower in the upper right, we're going to make a shape that angles from the top center of the canvas angling down to the lower right hand side. With our little skinny brush, and kind of towards the middle ish of the flower, but uh, an elongated shape of red in there. And that is how that hold that up so you can see it there. Oh, I love this painting. Such a happy, loose painting, fun to paint. And then I can stick my little skinny brush in the water jar to let that sit for a minute. And I'll let you uh, paint those. I know I tend to paint a little fast. I've painted quite a bit at this point. I've been sipping and painting Hanson now for four and a half years. Always a pleasure. It's been a little different lately. Uh, right now, we're just working for kids, so if you want to hit up my Venmo, that's always appreciated. And uh, otherwise, maybe we'll get to see you back soon in person when we get to reopen on July 1st. We'll see. Uh, you can check out our upcoming schedule for that. All right. And we do have masks for sale in the studio, and we have all kinds of uh, safety features in place these days to hear about. Um, let us see. If my assistant was going to let me know, what, what were you going to let me know? Uh, we have kits uh, available for sale for kids, and we're going to have the accompanying videos posted on YouTube for a lot of kids painting. And we're also going to have, uh, we also have kits for sale for grown -ups. So um, you can stop in and, and get those as well. So we have Oh, and the painting I paint tonight is going to go up for sale on the sale table. All the paintings that I make here, Pacific and Painting Hampton, uh, do go up for sale, and you can get original art at a bargain. They're about $13 a piece, and we have a whole table full of paintings, all the recent ones we've done, plus some ones that we did 
a couple months ago, uh, up for sale, and you can own an original or give one to a friend as a gift. And uh, original art, what is better than that? I love it. I got myself some original art. I was uh, looking at that this morning. I have a picture of a bird hanging above my little vanity, and I love it. It makes me happy every time I see it. I just love my little bird. So now we have our white flowers with the red centers, but we want to make sure that we uh, give them little black details to make them look like they have little petals there. So I cleaned off that little skinny brush again. We'll walk, make sure you see it. <laughs> little skinny brush. And wiped it on the paper towel there or wool rag. And now I'm going to pick up some black paint with my little skinny brush and make some hints of petals on my flowers. Now, these black shapes are kind of radiating out from the center. There's really, I'm not even sure there's any rhyme or reason to these. We just want to give a little hint of texture to these. So think about some flowers that you've seen. The ones that grow out in my yard have little uh, wavy edges to them. And so that's, that's kind of what I'm thinking about as I put these in here. And I'm pressing this little skinny brush really lightly to the canvas. And just kind of going back and forth with some uh, wavy little interesting zigzaggy lines. And I want to make sure I kind of wiggle my hand in all different directions to get an interesting texture there. Let me show you what that looks like close up. Just kind of a uh, scallop line that's kind of crazy. You just really can have fun with that to give a hint of texture. And I am echoing the shape in the center starting with the flower here right above the base and i'm going to go on the edge with a couple of these and this is black paint i'm using black for this on my little skinny brush and sometimes i'm pressing the brush harder to the canvas to get a wider line and sometimes i'm picking it up further away from the canvas to get a skinnier line so varying the pressure of the brush on the canvas will change the quality of the line and again, these lines don't have to be continuous. You can stop and start it. I don't want to go all the way around the edge. If you do go around the entire edge and close it, it'll give it a cartoony quality, which is totally fine. It just is a particular style. It'll definitely have a look about it. I always kind of think of um, all those, you know, Marvel cartoon kind of, uh, you know, comic book. If you make your uh, shapes all enclosed, it'll have that kind of quality. But with this painting, I'm going real loosey-goosey and uh, scalloped, kind of crazy, zigzaggy lines and stopping and starting them so that it's real open. The one on the upper right-hand side of this flower are close together, a couple close together lines. And then I have a big, wide line kind of enclosing the lower left-hand side of that flower and a couple echoing the center part as well. So you can see just a little hint of black, and that really gives that uh, flower some pop it and makes it appear to move forward or uh, in space in my composition, kind of brings that flower forward. So we want to do that. And in fact, in this sample, I want to put maybe even a couple of dots, that black paint, on the center over that red. You can just kind of Tap a couple little bits of black right over the red, and that'll bring the color. I kind of like to move. If I have a color on the canvas, I like to move it on the canvas. I like to move it around to different parts of the canvas. It draws your eye around. So adding a little bit of black got that red center, and then your eye moves all around that shape from the black lines that semi enclosed with the flower right in the middle there. And I can continue that with all my flowers here. This sample, it looks like the artist uh, added a little bit of part of the gray paint to the flower to give that a uh, little bit of color. That is an option too. Let's look at that. So I'm going to leave that little skinny brush in the water jar for just a minute before I continue with my flat shapes. And I got a medium sized brush. And now I have it all clean on the paper towel there, but 
wiping off all the water and I'm going to pick up white paint to start and just a little itty bitty bit of black paint. If you uh, mix colors with acrylic, you'll find that the dark colors want to take over. So you always want to start with the light colors first and add just a little dark to start when you mix. So I'm just adding a tiny corner of the brush to the black paint to get a light gray in there because I want it mostly white and just a little touch of black and then I'm going to scrub in just a little bit of gray by twisting the brush around and putting a few petals in gray on that left hand flower. And while I have that here again, when you have a color on the canvas, you want to move it around to different parts of the canvas. While I have that on the brush, I'm going to stick a couple of brush strokes of that on this big flower in the middle. And lucky for me, my brush was kind of messy with green paint. There's a little bit of that in there too, and I like that. I like that. I'll show you that up close because that is real subtle. There's a little bit of green mixed with that too. So just a few dots of gray paint over my white and those flowers in the upper part of the canvas. Just for a little variety before I add in that black detail. Keep it, keep it interesting, give it variety. So now I can go back to that little skinny brush. And I'm going to make sure I get all the water off of that, twisting that around on the paper towel. And then I'm going to pick up the black paint again with the little skinny brush and go around and make interesting zigzaggy scallops on my flowers here. And here, you don't have to. Make sure you hit all those edges exactly. You can, uh, I, in this case, underlap them. I left the white showing around the edge. It can be really uh, interesting and varied. Uh, so now, add a few crazy zigzaggy lines, and you can go right over your gray petals as well. I'm going to put a few more lines on my far left flower, but more of the lines are going to be on the right hand side of it in this case just because I want a variety. And the thickest line in this flower is right on the edge because I want to make it appear almost a little shadowy on that edge. So making, pressing the brush to the canvas more on the right hand side to make that brush stroke wider. I guess they kind of look like carnations too. That could be, that could be what they are. But you can see they're wider brush stroke on the right hand side of that far left flower. So I have more black lines on the, on the right hand side too. You can, you can do that detail or you can do your flowers any way you like. Now in this sample, some of these brush strokes reach from the center of the flower out towards the edge so we can do that too, little zigzags that reach out and kind of radiate from the center. And it's an option as well to give it a little bit of variety. This is on my big white flower on the right hand side. Whoops, and just a little zigzag up towards the top edge of that canvas. And I made a wider line on, in this case, on the left-hand side of the flower. I'm doing that by, I'm twisting the brush, the full skinny brush around in my fingers, and lifting it up and off here and there to get a skinnier brush stroke. So there's a little bit of pressing and twisting and lifting. It's a variety of brush strokes. If you press, you'll get a wider brush stroke. If you lift, you get a skinnier brush stroke. So change it up. Keep it interesting. And remember, 
the line can stop and start and be a little bit dashed and spotted. It doesn't have to be a continuous line. And make some of these shorter and some longer. That is, do a little bit of surprise. And finally, I have my flower here on the lower right. And I'm going to go kind of around the edge of that guy. Nothing fun. Twisting this brush around and making an interesting brush stroke. Isn't that fun? Isn't that great? Kind of random shape that is. It makes me happy. Happy little flowers. We are, uh, I'm sure you've heard the phrase happy little tree. We are very fond of Bob Ross, but Tiffany and Penny Hampton Studios because the owner teaches Bob Ross classes. And she does that with all the proprietary Bob Ross oil paint. She has, uh, she teaches those classes about once a month, and I think there may be some coming to um, YouTube near you. Uh, I'm not sure if those have happened yet, but we'll have to take a look on our YouTube channel and check it out. But they uh, will be at the studio, and you can learn how to paint just like Bob Ross. She's fantastic. She has gone down to the school in Florida and learned the Bob Ross technique and has brought it back here and is one of the only uh, certified Bob Ross instructors in Colorado. There's not that many. So check that out at the main painting. Mm -hmm. Finishing up my interesting little black petal there. And I'm gonna echo this little brush stroke here and there to get, make it look like layers of petals, like baby carnations or something fun and stopping and starting those lines. Just enough to make it look like flowers. It'll look like petals. And maybe adding a dot or two of black in the center too here and there. Just a little bit to bring that out. Not in everyone. I think I'd do that with three, but not the four. Got to keep it interesting. And I noticed an interesting little detail on my sample. I want to make sure I include. I cleaned off my little skinny brush. And I'm going to add this little spiral. It looks like there's a little spiral stem uh, in the planter coming off the upper right. I like that detail. So I cleaned off my little skinny brush. I'm going to add a little bit of white, a little bit of green to my little skinny brush, twisting around and mix that up, and then just making a little uh, spiral shape off the upper right hand side. I like that fun little detail. Make sure you add enough water to the paint. I was a little bit low on water, so I had to go back there and I had a little water to smooth that out. But if you have enough, you can do it in one go. We came from the center here and just spiraled that out because I just think that's a fun little detail on the upper left hand side of that painting. I love that. Want to make sure I have that. Oh, and that reminds me, I love this little leaf here on the lower right. So I'm going to get out my medium sized brush from the water, get the extra water out of that brush by wiping it on the paper towel, and now I'm going to pick up some green paint for me inside brush because I want to make sure I get this uh, little leaf hanging out uh, in the lower right. And I just press the brush to canvas and twisted my fingers and lifted it up and off to get that fun small leaf. I want to just get a couple of leaves on the lower part there like that. That's a little blob, a little leaf. Maybe we'll make one on this side too, just a tiny one. Make sure you step back from your painting and take the whole thing in. That way you'll know where you want to put more leaves or where you want to fill in the centers. I want to get some of that yellow cover, but I, I still want to leave some of it showing through. I don't want to leave too much. I want more green filled in towards the center, more yellow open up on the side. So now that it's more filled in, I can see just where to close that up. Just adding a few more green strokes there on my team. And I want to make sure that I remember that I painted over my uh, light 
sparkles on the water jar. So I want to reinstate those. Make sure you get your brush real clean for this because especially when you go back to white, you want a clean brush. Switch that around really well in the water jar and blot that on the paper towel to get it real clean. And then you can pick up white paint and put a couple of those little uh, sparkly sunlit uh, marks that echo the outside of that water jar. You can add a little tiny bit of blue paint like you did at the beginning or just make these pure white. I'll show you what that looks like. Kind of put those back in over the stem. Just a couple of brush strokes that echo the shape of the outside of that jar. Kind of had a curve, gentle curve in so that these echo that curve up towards the center. And it's a little bit of white paint mixed with the blue paint. And you can do that with either the little skinny brush or the medium sized brush. It's up to you. Love it. <laughs> Adding that in there. I want to make sure that you can see my my little jar there too. So I'm gonna fix my my edges were messy. Make sure that you step back from your penny as you work and you can see if you decide to make any adjustments like I'm doing now as you uh, get towards the end of this painting and finish it up. Make sure that you like how it looks. I have a friend who's an artist who says that you always need a friend to help you decide when you're done. Because the artist never quite knows when they're done, right? It's hard to know when it's stuff. It's so much fun painting. I want to add just another little detail. I, uh, I have all the black confined to the uh, edges of the flowers, and I wanted to make some darker spots in my foliage to bring that all together. So I'm going to Go back to my medium sized brush and I wipe that off on the paper towel and I'm gonna just load that medium sized brush up with black and add a few twisty spots of black in that. And by twisty I mean I'm twisting the brush around in my fingers. Just a few little spots of black. Let me show you what that looks like. Close up, just adding a few brush strokes of that over the foliage so we get a little bit of depth in there and a little bit of shadow just here and there and it'll bring that black just like we talked about before how you kind of skip around when you have a color on the canvas you want to make sure it appears in other places here we want to make the black appear here and there just little hints of it we don't want it to take over just adding maybe five spots of black here and there, or five areas, I should say, but it's a lot of different little spots, maybe with the brush, but just here and there in our, in our leaf, leafy area. Oh, I love it. And that is one cheerful flower painting. So I want to make sure I get to see what you do as well. As you decide that you're getting finished with this painting, do remember that the artist always signs their work. Now, when I'm at Sipping and Painting Hampton, cheers to that, I do have signing pens, which are paint pens, but I don't have that here. So I'm going to just use that little skinny brush and sign my initials in the corner with it. Just make sure it's real clean. Uh, and then you can pick up some dark paint, and I would put my initials here in the corner so that everybody knows who did the work of art. That way you can give it to a friend or hang it up on your wall and everybody will know who painted it. So you want to make sure you sign your paintings as well. So if it was fun, everybody will know who did it. And then when you're world famous, they can sell it for a million dollars. A million dollars. Ooh, I like that spiral up there. I'm going to add just one more little, little spiral on the lower left. A little bit, little bit green paint. I just like that. I'm going to add another little spiral down there because I think that's fun. See, you never know when you're done. I could, I could, I could keep painting this, but I want to see your paintings too. So if you want to um, put the video on your camera, you can hold them up and we can take a picture. So um, let me see what you've been doing this evening. If anybody wants to show. And Cynthia, I do want to just reiterate also that 
uh, tomorrow. I will be editing this and then I'll put it on YouTube. So if anyone did not finish or they want to, you know, go back tomorrow and tweak theirs a little bit, they can look on YouTube and, and follow along uh, just like they did tonight. Oh, sure. That will be on our YouTube channel. So, um, yeah, make sure that you, you can always check these out when they're all edited and posted. But let's see, there's my painting. I want to <laughs> try to hold that up straight and get it in an angle. Oh, this way. There we go. I'm hold that up for you. You can show me yours if you like. We would if love it. If, yeah, I was going to say we, we would love it if people wanted to uh, turn on their camera because everyone's turned off. If you want to turn it on and show us your painting, we'll get a screen snip of the whole thing. And you don't have to be finished. I know that um, this class is, uh, you know, over a little bit early, which is fine. Um, if you're not finished, you can still hold it up. We can see it. Take the picture. And you can, uh, you know, continue to tweak it all you want. For me, I always say that bragging is half the fun. <laughs> I love to brag <laughs> about finished artwork. The great thing about the art, though, is uh, you can finish it at home and then brag about it later. So I understand if you want to uh, hold them back and uh, wait till you're done. But if you if you want to show in progress, I'd love to see you too. So you can let us know. Otherwise. Uh, you can hit up my Venmo at Ernstine Art, but I want to make sure I thank you for joining us tonight and painting with us at Sipping and Painting Hampton. We look forward to you subscribing to our YouTube channel and uh, seeing all our upcoming videos. We are doing this Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday for now, and look on our upcoming schedule to see what is up. There's always a different teacher instructing as well, so you get different paintings and different instructors, so you can uh, get something new all the time.